Hello, and welcome back to another amazing episode of Searching for Service, brought to you by Rotary District 5950 and 5960. I'm Kelly Kirk. I'm Chad Larson. And I'm Joe Kirk. And we have the pleasure of having Nate Miller, who is the chapter president of the Minnesota Twin Cities South for Sleep in Heavenly Peace. Welcome. Quite the title there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks but for before we dive in, though, to who Nate is and what Sleep in Heavenly Peace is, Joe is going to remind us of our professional purpose. Our professional purpose. Our show's purpose is to <laughs> is to is to really expose Rotarians and non-Rotarians to service opportunities and anybody that's out there looking for service opportunities. And how we do that is we have amazing people on, such as Nate to tell us about really great organizations, things that are going on in the community, stories, why why they're involved in service, how they got, you know, associated to their service projects, and hopefully that inspires you to serve and then obviously we believe that Rotary is the vehicle to help support service opportunities. Welcome to you, Nate. Thank you. And as we mentioned, you're going to be a professional pro at this conference. So, well, um, a little nervous. Yes, Nate, this <laughs> no. Okay, number one, speak directly into the microphone. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll pick up anything. It'll pick it up. So don't lean Let's, too far back. We'll take it easy on you. Let's start right. off with um, where did you grow up? Yeah, I grew up in the western suburbs in Maple okay. Plain, but my family and I have been in Burnsville and in the South Metro for the last 25 years. Okay. South the river. That's what we're calling home these days. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. And and you are with an organi- organization called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. Um, how did you how did you get to that organization? Yeah. Well, my story is that, and I think this is true with many people, is like in your twenties, you kind of you're thinking about yourself, you're building your family. There's a lot of things on your mind, and you're thinking. By the time I hit my 30s, I'm going to be really old and wise. And by that time, (laughs) I'll be able to invest in others and look outside myself. And so I found myself thinking that in the 20s. And then I get in my 30s, I'm thinking, well, I'm almost there, but I'm not quite there. By the time I get into my 40s, surely I'll have it all figured out. I get in my 40s, and lo and behold, I did not have it all figured out. And pretty soon I said, you know what? I don't think I'm ever going to figure it all out. I better Mm. just get started. Ooh, I I like it. it. I like yeah. it. A By the lot. way, you don't look forty. <laughs> no, you do not. I, I can I can agree with that. So, um, will you share with our listeners? I'm jumping ahead again, um, but we we like to do that here and there. So, <laughs> tell us about what is Sleep in Heavenly Peace? Yeah, it's a nonprofit, a 501c3 nonprofit that was started ten years ago in Twin Falls, Idaho, by a guy named Luke Mickelson. And it's a pretty cool story because it was Christmas morning. They had just opened a slew of presents, and the kids look at mom and dad and say, we're bored. <laughs> so dad says, are you kidding me? Everybody out in the garage, we've got some extra lumber. We're going to do something. We're going to do a project. We're going to build a project. And they had just done this bed build with their church a while before, so they had this extra lumber. He said, let's build another bed, and then we'll just give it away on Facebook. And so they built one bed. They put it on Facebook, and it got gobbled up immediately. Of course, no surprise that somebody needed the bed. Mm -hmm. But what they were really surprised about was the outpouring from the community that said, hey, we want to get involved in this. We have a mattress. Mm -hmm. We have blankets. We have pillows. What can we do to be involved? And this light bulb went off in their head, and they thought, let's bring some of our friends together, and let's build beds for kids in need. But it started out as kind of a a Christmas time event. And so the first year Mm -hmm. was just around Christmas, and they thought, we'll do it again next year on Christmas. And They had so much fun and so much demand and so many people were interested in it. They started to do it multiple times throughout the year. And then they started. So then friends, their friends from college and and their family would come from other cities and they would come to this bed build and they'd build these beds and they got the bug. And then they said, hey, we want to do this in our own city. And so they started to kind of unofficially form these chapters. um, And it, it eventually formalized into Sleep in Heavenly Peace but for the first three or four or five years, it, it stayed kind of in that four-chapter, five-chapter range and um, was just friends and family. Um, and then that's when I met Luke and the team, when they were small like that. And, the, and then the story really changed. Things really took off since then. Yeah, how many – I was looking on the website. There's a – how many different states yeah. are there? 
there's 270 chapters right now. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, so in the, last, years? Wow. in the last seven years. Wow. So we were we were the fifth chapter ever for Sleep in Heavenly Peace, which I just cool. love because I loved meeting everybody when it was raw and it was small and it was this little thing that was there was no formality. There was very little process. It was kind yeah. of we're just doing this thing. And I love that about it. And so I got to be a part of that. And um, we were the first um, chapter east of Idaho, which was cool. We were way out east, they thought, you know, yeah. back oh, then. Gosh. And um, so we started, we had our first bed build. And not long after that, we had this opportunity to be on a show called Returning the Favor with Mike Rowe. It's a podcast. It's available on Facebook. I would highly recommend checking it out. Sleep in Heavenly Peace, Returning the Favor on Facebook. And we got to go out to Twin Falls, Idaho, my wife and I, and be a part of this show. And we filmed it over a weekend, and it aired um, in February. So that was like in November of 2017. It aired in February of 2018. And three weeks later, we had um, conference calls on Teams with hundreds and hundreds of people that wanted to start their own chapters just from watching that show. So we exploded. We went from... uh, this small group of people who all knew each other and we were doing it without process to, oh my gosh, now we got to figure this thing out. There has to be, Mm -hmm. where do you sign up? Where do you get your materials? How do we buy this? What's our insurance? (laughs) What what do we do with all of these things? We had to scale so fast that it turned from all of those people being chapter presidents to being national leaders. I became Mm. the director of the Midwest region and I had (laughs) had four builds under my belt. I've done this like a year. And maybe You're that's pro. true with Rotarians, yeah. too. Like, we get sometimes we get thrust into oh. positions where yes. we're just figuring it out and we have to learn it. And <laughs> it stretches us, but, yeah. you know, Sounds it's pretty about exciting. Right. Yeah. 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 You mean, like, uh, like figuring out a, a show and podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something yeah, like yeah. that. We, Something we, like that. Yeah. I mean, can relate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I would like this to be in uh, 250 cities yeah. as well. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. So I heard that you, like... Um, I heard the year 2017, so at least that amount of time you've been yeah. involved. When did you, like, officially get started with Sleep yeah, in Heavenly Peace? My story is that um, I built a bed for my daughter, and it went really well. I loved it. I love to build things. I just need to be building things at all times. And so I built this bed. I gave it to my daughter, and I said to my wife, I really want to build another bed. And she said, we don't need any more beds. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, well, our church has this thing that's, you know, every week where they give away stuff to the community. I thought, I'll just go there and I'll build one or two beds in my garage at night and I'll go and give the bed away. It'll be great. So I went out and Googled um, free bed plans for kids. Hmm. And the first website that popped up was this little one-page, simple website, <laughs> Sleep in Heavenly Peace. So I read through it, and there's just an email address for this guy, Luke Mickelson. So I email him, and I wrote him my, my story, and I said, could I just use your plans? That's, would you be okay if I use your plans? And about 45 minutes later, the phone rings, <laughs> and Luke introduces himself, and he tells me his story about what they're doing out there and what's happening. And I, I just caught fire you know I just caught the passion for it we started talking and about an hour and a half later we're still talking and I'm walking pacing the kitchen (laughs) just like and then we could do this and then we and and so sounds like my husband (laughs) you guys will get along (laughs) get him on a roll and he is like obsessed (laughs) yeah it was really fun I felt it and I was excited about it and so Unofficially, during that call, I signed up to be the fifth chapter. <laughs> I was there, right? The first so, call. <laughs> yeah. So I hang up the phone. I'm like, wow, I never talked to my wife about this. <laughs> that's going to be an Yikes. interesting conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's where it started. And then not long after that, you know, we went through this, some more conversations and stuff. And Luke and maybe five other people flew out from Idaho, and they helped us put on our first build. And that was at Northern Tool and Equipment, which is where I've worked for 20 years. Cool. Um, Northern gave us some money to get started with some tools, and they let us build there, and a lot of the employees came, and we had a big group of people, and it took us most of the day to build 20 beds, which is really interesting if you think about how we're doing it now, and we'll talk about that, but it's a far cry from how we're doing it today. But (laughs) we muscled through it, and we got our first beds built, and then we went on the first deliveries, and that was it. I mean, at that point, we were all in. Yeah, I thought so, 20, 20 cool. sounded like a lot in a day. Like, wow. Yeah, like if, you don't, if you're oh, not no. aware yeah. of like, how many put together you're a actually, bed, you'll be like, 20, yeah. it's great. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Well, so, and the, the connection to like uh, a company like Northern Tool, yeah. holy cow. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're, they're pretty. Right. 
you know, pretty big. So Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great source. And we'll get more into Sleep and Heavenly Peace in the next section. We did not get it. You mentioned it. Your family. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about your family. Kids? Grandkids? Yeah, I'm married. Or do you? Wow, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> I'm married. I have I actually have four adult children, and I have three granddaughters. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. I've moved what? out of my 40s, yes. <laughs> okay. I'm officially in my 50s. Oh. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, I have three granddaughters, and two of them just the other night learned how to ride their bike without training wheels. So those are pretty awesome oh my moments, gosh. right? When you oh, run man. alongside, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we live in Burnsville. We live right on Buck Hill. Um, okay. And one of the things that's so cool is I had lived in Burnsville for, you know, roughly 15 years before getting involved in SHP. And I thought I was connected with the community, but it's a whole nother level since SHP started. And I, I assume mm-hmm. it's the same with Rotarians yeah. and Lions clubs and anything. Mm-hmm. The whole community looks different. The way I think about businesses in the community is totally different. Um, so it, it's been awesome. It feels even more like home than it ever did before. That's so cool. Yeah, and you, that's... you start to see so many of like the little uh, dynamics that you, you don't see when you're just kind of yeah, walking yeah. through your community. Well, and I think that that just speaks to like an organization like Sleep in Heavenly Peace and how it can truly just help um, build a community yeah. well, and build the people within the community. Well, and I'm too. sure we'll get it in the next thing. I mean, it's it, it's one of those things. Wait a second. You sleep in a bed. I sleep in a bed. Yeah. We all sleep. Yeah. Wait a second. You don't have a bed? Yeah. <laughs> that seems yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we certainly have a lot to cover in this next section. And so um, you are listening to Searching for Service. I'm Kelly Kirk. I'm Chad Larson. And I'm Joe Kirk. And we'll be back. Rotary is a place for all community-minded people who want to serve their areas with the support of an international organization. Join Rotary to find service. Join Rotary to find inclusion. Join Rotary to find leadership. Join Rotary to find fun. Join Rotary to find friendship. Join Rotary to find a better version of the world. Find a Rotary club near you at rotary.org and click on Club Finder. There is a club out there for everyone. Find your fit with Rotary. Rotary.org. For decades, eradicating polio worldwide has been Rotary's cornerstone cause. We are incredibly close to ridding the globe of this virus, but we need everyone's help to get us to the goal. World Polio Day is October 24th. Please consider making a new donation to Polio Plus or increasing your already generous giving. Go to npolio.org to be a part of this historical eradication of polio. You will help get vaccinations to the most remote parts of our world and help fulfill a promise we made to end polio now. Two drops, and it stops. Don't miss Leonard Skinner, Darius Rucker, Ario Speedwagon, and Tyler Hubbard at Lakefront Music Fest, July 14th and 15th at Lakefront Park in Prior Lake. Leonard Skinner headlines July 14th with Ario Speedwagon and Blackstone Cherry. Darius Rucker headlines July 15th with Tyler Hubbard of Florida Georgia Line and Joe Nichols. Tickets available at lakefrontmusicfest.com. That's lakefrontmusicfest.com. Produced by Prior Lake Rotary. Riverbend Nature Center is a free nonprofit natural habitat in Faribault, Minnesota, with 743 acres, the Straight River, and 10 miles of trails. Despite no public funding, it offers educational programs to almost 10,000 youth and families annually. Riverbend seeks your feedback on its new strategic plan at rbnc.org backslash strategic dash planning by March 30th. Thank you for your time. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Searching for Service, brought to you by Rotary District 5950 and 5960. I'm Kelly Kirk. I'm Chad Larson. And I'm Joe Kirk. If you are tuning in for the first time, we have Nate Miller, who is the chapter president of the Minnesota Twin Cities South for Sleep in Heavenly Peace. And we got to hear a little bit about how Nate was connected to Sleep in Heavenly Peace. Really quick, before we move on to more about symptoms, <laughs> how did the conversation with the wife go? Obviously, okay, but was there a little... Uh... Tension? <laughs> there was definitely some apprehension. <laughs> I've, I've drug her through some things in the past, and luckily my batting average is pretty high. Things turn out okay. <laughs> <laughs> just don't help. But the group from Twin Falls came out, and they're 
wonderful people, as you can imagine. So that that set us off on a good start. And then, like I said, we went to that first delivery, which was to a family in Minneapolis, a mom of four kids, hardworking. She had two jobs. Um, she had just been out looking for mattresses in dumpsters because she was at risk of losing her kids because she didn't have beds. And to have keep your kids, you need to have beds. So she was doing everything she possibly could. She found our listing that we had just built those beds, and we had them available, and we delivered them to her. And we made such a strong connection with that family, and those kids were all over us. And we built, we put four bunks, uh, two sets of bunks, four beds in. It was the greatest experience, and we walked out of there, and she said, that's it. I'm all in. Ah. Let's go. Holy moly. That that's sounds a little right. wink for her, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's Sounds great, like uh, leaps of faith are yeah, good things. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's a great story. Well, that brings up a question I had. Is obviously we know that sleep's important, but you you saw how important it was right away. Yeah. How do you identify or people find in you, or how do you identify and, and get these out to the community? Yeah, great question. We have partnerships or connections with hundreds of organizations in the South Metro, like 360 communities, schools, churches. Um, we just keep building connections, and we have this giant list of people that we email as we have beds ready, and they help us find people, and then through other social media like Facebook as well. Yeah. Uh, right now, I mean, if you're wondering, right now um, we have over 200 kids that are waiting for beds. Wow. So there's a constant need just in the South Metro area, just in the communities yeah. that we wow. serve. So, yeah. To, so then – then obviously you're trying to do projects to to meet the needs. Yeah. So how do you how do you align those things? Yeah, we we continue to try to grow. So our first year, seven years ago, our first build season, we built 150 beds. This year, we're shooting for 700 beds, um, and that would put us at 3,000 beds built and delivered over those seven years. So we've progressively gotten bigger and stronger over the years as it's moved from me and a truck and doing everything myself to this amazing team um, with core team volunteers and then connecting with groups like Rotarians and, and Lions that bring all of these resources, financial yeah. and people and connections. And as we connect with them deeper, we get stronger and we are able to help more kids. I think that's a nice little lead in. Like, how did you, how did your chapter get connected to a rotary and which specific rotary was it? That Yeah, I think the first place that we spoke to was the Burnsville Rotary and okay. the Lakeville Seems Rotary and yeah. Friar Lake Rotaries are our three closest connections. Um, and it starts with the just getting invited to a meeting, mm -hmm. just to tell your story, just for a few minutes and see if there's a connection. And we had a really strong connection with all three clubs right from the beginning. It's incredible. And then my favorite part about connecting with these groups is, um, like, with the Prior Lake Rotary, they have the Lakefront Music Festival, which is a massive event, mm -hmm. right? And so I love this idea that this, the dollars start in the community. So these people, these Rotarians, take time out of their lives because everybody's life's busy. You don't have enough time, but they take time out to try to make the community better and invest back in the community and put on this giant event, and they, they put so much hard work into it. Then the community comes out, spends the money. The Rotarians look for good places to put those dollars that they're going to actually make an impact and people are respectful and careful with the money. We're recipient of that. Then we host a build day where we build the beds and the Rotarians come and work alongside it and mm -hmm. see their money and see their efforts in action. And it draws people in from the community. And then we take the beds that we build and we go out with the Rotarians and with the people in the community and deliver them to kids in the community that need beds. So it's just this holistic, like everything is right in the community, stays in the community, the impact is there. Um, people actually get to see the impact too. Yeah. So you spoke to like how um, Rotarians, for instance, can see where their dollar is going when they're coming and they're doing the build, but then you take it a step further and you go, see? This is, this is who we're impacting, and this is the difference that we're making with the dollars that are contributed. So that's right, that's incredible. And a lot of several Rotarians have said we love not just writing a check and then not seeing where it goes, just right. handing the check off, and that's the last part we see. No, no, we're going to get dusty. We're going to get dirty right alongside oh. you and put it in action. I like that. And then in action, can you walk us through a little bit about the process? Yeah. So, like on a build, what does that look like? What does it look like from say fundraising to 
procuring the the materials. You know, it sounded like you were trying to figure out what the plan, like the specific plan was for assembly, how to then mobilize all of the people that you have coming in. Like walk us through yeah. what that process looks like. Yeah. So about two thirds of our fundraising comes from groups like Rotarians and Lions and the other third come from individual contributors. And so we do our fundraising. We have a build season that is basically from May through I was September. Ask, you mentioned that. Oh, it coincides yeah. well, with construction season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we like to build outside. <laughs> there's a lot of sanding and cutting, and there's a lot of sawdust. And we've done it inside a few times, but it is less enjoyable when you're inside. <laughs> mm, uh, fair it, enough. It looks yeah. like a, a cloud. Yeah. So we build outside. So May is the safest start. And so we have a build each month, May, June, July, August, September. Um, this is the way we choose to do it. Other chapters do it totally differently. You can imagine people in Phoenix, they're doing their building year yeah. round and yeah, yeah. they Probably try to avoid not in it. June, July, July yeah. outside. Right. Too much. No. In reverse. <laughs> their build season is a different yeah. time of the year. But a little longer. <laughs> yeah, a little longer. <laughs> so we fundraise and then we, um, we have a tool set. Like we have all the tools, everything's provided. We have 75 sanders. We have 55 drills. We have all of that stuff ready to go. And we actually store it at Northern Tool and Equipment. We build in the warehouse and outside. Um, and so we're ready to go. We get our lumber through Lowe's. Um, they have been an amazing partner for us from the very beginning. They give us, sell the, us the lumber at cost. So we make those dollars go even further. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. um, and there's a great story of how we got connected with Lowe's is, um, I sent it was the first fundraising thing I had done. I sent a letter to Lowe's. I was super nervous about it. I'm like, this is not going to go well. They're not going to listen. There's no way. And I sent a letter and I hadn't heard anything for a while. And I called and I missed the store manager and I didn't get a, get her. And then I called back again. I was talking to her, explaining who I was, fumbling through it very nervously. And she said, hold on a minute. And she put me on hold. And then she came back and she said, you're not going to believe what just happened. She said, my assistant store manager, Shanna, just walked in and she held up your letter and she said, we need to do this. Wow. <laughs> yeah. She said, when I, was a, wow. <laughs> when I was a kid, I didn't have a bed. We need to do this. And so literally while I was on the phone with the store manager, you couldn't have asked for better timing. And yeah. Then yeah. just that connection that with timing, her. Holy. I mean, then for I years. <laughs> <laughs> would for have years, had we've had such a strong connection with that. It's the Shakopee Lowe's. So okay. they've been amazing. We've had builds there before. Um, so it's been a great connection. So we get our lumber there. We bring everything to Northern. We invite about 330 people in from the community to have a build day. We have four sessions. Each of them are two hours long. And in those four two-hour sessions, so in eight hours, we built 142 beds just last weekend. Wow. Um, so we have, it is an assembly line. A little better line. than 24. Yeah. <laughs> it is yeah. a machine, and we have it. And we have jobs for everybody, 11 plus. You don't have to be, often people will say, oh, my uncle, he's a carpenter, and he'd be great. Nope. It actually probably yeah. would frustrate your carpenter uncle because it's literally just assembly line type work. Anybody yeah. can do this. It's safe. All, all capabilities can do it. We have different jobs for different people. Um, so it's something that everybody can enjoy. Very cool. Well, when there's always the story, right? Like yes. you've got two of them in this one. Like <laughs> yeah. the, the lows of that, that's so cool. It just gives you, just gives you goosebumps. Before I, I want I better ask, when is the next build and are you looking for volunteers? <laughs> yes. And actually, <laughs> the, because of the strength of the clubs and the, their generosity and how hard they work, fundraising is, I mean, we're always looking, but it's not our number one need right now. Our number one need is to make sure that we have enough volunteers to build the beds. Um, our next build is June 15th through the 17th. June 15th through the 17th. So we have sessions Thursday night, a two-hour session, Friday night, a two-hour session, and then two two-hour sessions on Saturday morning. And we're in Burnsville at the Northern Tool and Equipment headquarters. You just show up in clothes that you're ready to get dusty and dirty. <laughs> two hours, work hard, go home, and it will change change your weekend. I promise you that. <laughs> Very like cool. It. How do you procure volunteers then <clears throat> outside of, like, just what you, what you spoke of right now? <laughs> like, yeah, just... Um, we have a growing base of people that we email that are that return people that tend to come. They tend to return because they have yeah. a good time and they they see that the impact that they make. Um, and then we're just out telling our story and through Facebook and anyway. 
Visiting rotaries. Yeah, <laughs> visiting <laughs> rotaries. Sure. Shockbeat Rotary. It sounds like you guys need to connect with them. <laughs> well, I mean, you already My have old hometown, a, yeah, so you I can call them out. A, a connection point to the Lowe's yeah. there in Shakopee, so it would only make sense yeah. that you would connect with like the Rotary that's there in Shakopee Yeah, and we too. there's so many connections. We have delivery teams in Shakopee delivering beds, and you remember that store manager that I told you about? She said, I want to go on a delivery with you guys. I want to see this happen. And so I said, okay, I'll set up a delivery. And we picked her up, and we put the end, the – we had all the stuff, and we put in the address, and we start driving. And the place that we went to was an apartment that was in line of sight to the Shakopee Lowe's. Wow. You could throw a stone and hit the building. That's how close. That's what? how tight this stuff is. Like, it was right there by the Shakopee Lowe's. This stuff is all happening all around us. It's right here. It's real. Yeah. It's our community. So, yeah. 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 That's so cool. That's incredible. Unbelievable. And we're and we are ready to wrap up this section. I can't believe how quickly this went. So as a reminder, you are listening to Searching for Service. I'm Kelly Kirk. I'm Chad Larson. And I'm Joe Kirk. Stay tuned for more great stuff with Nate Miller. up and go into your like rotary is a place for all community-minded people who want to serve their areas with the support of an international organization join rotary to find service join rotary to find inclusion join rotary to find leadership join rotary to find fun join rotary to find friendship join rotary to find a better version of the world find a rotary club near you at rotary.org and click on club finder there is a club out there for everyone find your fit with Rotary. Rotary Rotary.org. For decades, eradicating polio worldwide has been Rotary's cornerstone cause. We are incredibly close to ridding the globe of this virus, but we need everyone's help to get us to the goal. World Polio Day is October 24th. Please consider making a new donation to Polio Plus or increasing your already generous giving. Go to npolio.org to be a part of this historical eradication of polio. You will help get vaccinations to the most remote parts of our world and help fulfill a promise we made to end polio now. Two drops and it stops. Don't miss Leonard Skinner, Darius Rucker, Ario Speedwagon, and Tyler Hubbard at Lakefront Music Fest July 14th and 15th at Lakefront Park in Prior Lake. Leonard Skinner headlines July 14th with Ario Speedwagon and Blackstone Cherry. Darius Rucker headlines July 15th with Tyler Hubbard of Florida Georgia Line and Joe Nichols. Tickets available at lakefrontmusicfest.com. That's lakefrontmusicfest.com. Produced by Prior Lake Rotary. Riverbend Nature Center is a free, nonprofit natural habitat in Faribault, Minnesota. With 743 acres, the straight river, and 10 miles of trails. Despite no public funding, it offers educational programs to almost 10,000 youth and families annually. Riverbend seeks your feedback on its new strategic plan at rbnc.org backslash strategic dash planning by March 30th. Thank you for your time. Hello and welcome back to Searching for a Service, brought to you by Rotary District 5950 and 5960. I'm Kelly Kirk. I'm Chad Larson. And I'm Kelly's husband. <laughs> so, <laughs> Joe Kirk. <laughs> as a reminder, you can find us on your favorite podcast platforms and... Like, share, follow... We love reviews. Five gold stars. Five gold stars. There you go. <laughs> you can find us by searching for Searching for Service on all the platforms. That's a little bit of a tongue yeah, twister. Searching for I know. Searching for Service. I'll find, I'll find another way to say that. <laughs> <laughs> if you are tuning in for the first time, we have Nate Miller, who is the chapter president of the Minnesota Twin Cities South uh, for Sleep in Heavenly Peace. I think I got it. Yeah. We're good. It's all in there. I want, so in this last section, we were talking about this really um, incredible experience that you had with the, uh, the, who was the individual with Lowe's? Lowe's I'm, store manager. The, the store, store manager. manager. And so I'm certain that there are other incredible, memorable stories and experiences. So let's just keep rolling with that and get the, the feel good yeah. going. Yeah, it's, it's, um, when I started this, I thought that it would be, only about just giving those couple beds away. I mean, I was focused only on the kids. But one thing that I found 
as well as it's the people that I've met. You know, I, I didn't, I never imagined that I would meet 300 people at each one of these builds and all these people are typically, they're good people. They're taking time out of a busy Saturday to come in and work with tools and get dirty and put service before themselves. And, mm. and they're working hard and I love that. And so if you're feeling down, if you're watching too much news, yeah. if you're feeling down about the world <laughs> that we live in, if you go out and you partner with people like this, get involved in these clubs and these Rotarian clubs, Lions clubs, or Sleep in Heavenly Peace, whatever it is, you'll be amazed at how much goodness there is out there and how many good people there are. It's, it's just amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but just like that, being surprised by that, I'm, I'm just astounded by the, the things that happen that are more than a coincidence, that are, that are impactful and powerful and have changed me, changed my, my marriage, changed my life with my kids and our family. Um, and another one that stands out to me is this young man, Kimani, who lives in Savage. I and mean, he's just an outstanding young man. And he, we gave him a bed, he, he and his brothers, we delivered a bed to them. And he was so good. He used the impact drill. It's the first time he'd ever used one. He was so good at it. We, the kids come alongside us and they help us build the beds. And so he's building the bed. He's really good at it. I told him he's really good at it. And about halfway through, he looked at me and he said, I'd really like to help you do this with other kids. Cute. And I thought that was super powerful. And so I was excited. I talked to his mom and she said, absolutely. So about a month later, I throw a T-shirt in the car and I come over and I give him an SHP T-shirt and he and I went on a delivery together. Wow. Cute. It was really cool. It was really cool. And so he's 11 years old. And we're in Savage, and we're driving to a delivery in Burnsville. And it's in the winter, and so it's dark. It's 630. It's dark. We're navigating. He has no idea where we're going. He's 11, right? He has no mm-hmm. idea. And we drive for it's like a, It's like 10, 11 minutes. And we get there, and we pull into these townhomes, and it's dark. And he, he's kind of looking around, and he says, I think I used to live here. And I'm like, he's 11. There's no way. And I'm like, really, when? All three years ago. I'm like, no way. It's just townhomes. They look alike. There's no way that he knows this. (laughs) So it's dark. We're trying to find the house. And all of a sudden, I see a lady unloading groceries. So I pull over. I roll my window down to ask her for directions to this townhome. And she comes over, and she starts to tell me where it is. And then she looks past me and leans over into the car, and she says, hi, Kimani. (laughs) I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And he leans over, and he says, hi, Barb. And she, he says, Barb was our landlord when we lived here. Cute. And so sure enough, he lives here. And, and, and he lived there. And she says, Kimani, where are you looking for? It's just down the road here. It's one house away from where you grew up. Wow. And he looks at me and he said, when I lived there, I didn't have a bed. Oh, my So now gosh. Kimani drives across Burnsville into the neighborhood, the house next door to where he grew up and didn't have a bed. And he helps me deliver a bed to a family that was coming out of homelessness a husband and wife coming out of homelessness. They had this house. They were so excited about this town home. And we were able to put this bunk bed in for those two kids. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's... Truly incredible. It Getting awesome. chills, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> usually, usually when I'm quiet, it's a, it's a good indicator. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. It really is. Um, you had mentioned that there are, outside of just the builds themselves... There are other ways that people can get involved and have gotten involved. And so can you speak to what that looks like? Yeah, we talked all the way up through the build process. And then we don't just build the beds and then hand them off. We don't drive up to someone's house and just set it on the, you know, by the garage. We actually go into the home and we assemble the beds in the room and they come with a brand new mattress and brand new bedding. So they're ready to sleep in that night. So oh, wow. the night before they didn't have a bed and then that night they get to sleep in their bed. And what's really yeah. cool about that is we get kind of unprecedented access into people's lives. And what I love is the transformation. Um, when myself and our team of two or three other people come into the house, it's often nervous, you can imagine, yeah. right? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. we're in people's homes and it might not be guest ready or show ready or whatever and they don't know us and sometimes we look different than they look and there's just this nervousness and one of my favorite things is to watch that melt away over the 35 minutes 40 minutes that we're there and when we leave we're high-fiving hugging one of my favorites is big (laughs) big hugs from mom with tears you know about how much (laughs) this takes the pressure off of her and not having to worry about that and how proud she is because her kids helped build this bed and So for me, it's like all these things that I never thought about when I started this thing or joined, and I never thought how impactful it would be. But like one of my favorite things is melting that apprehension and changing that Mm -hmm. thing to go into somebody's home and make them feel comfortable about what they're receiving, that this is a gift and a blessing. 
And, I'm, and, and I think about all the people that went into getting to that point, the people that raised the money from the clubs, the people that were there working hard, our core team that set up all, everything, did all the registrations and did all that that helped for this moment, this magic moment when we get to deliver this bed. That's cool. That actually, I just um, had a thought. So are there different like sizes of beds that you mm. make? Yeah, we make one bed and they are bunk beds but they can be either a twin bed or they can be bunked so um, oftentimes we're going into places where there are multiple kids in a small space so the bunks work well but there are other cases where they have very active five-year-olds and mom says absolutely no way can i have a bunk bed he will launch off the (laughs) top bunk (laughs) and so we need those to be side by side twin beds no problem but they're all the same twin beds. They're basic. I mean, they're built out of like construction lumber, two by fours, two by sixes, one by fours. We sand them all, we stain them. Um, but they're really, really sturdy. They're yeah. built okay. like a deck, you know. So they're built to last because oftentimes this is the first bed the kid has ever had, and it might be the only bed that they ever have while they're mm-hmm. at home. But you asked the question about, like, how to get involved, and people come along on delivery. So if you find us on Facebook under MNSH. SHP Twin Cities South. We have um, access to links where you can sign up to deliver in your community. Like you can say, I want to deliver in Burnsville or Savage, and I'm available Thursday nights or Saturday mornings. And then when we set up deliveries, you can come along and be a part of that. Very cool. cool. There was something else that you had mentioned too with like blankets and. Yeah. Okay. So um, we get the majority of our bedding is donated. It's all new. Um, like I said, it comes with the bed. But we get the majority of it donated, and that allows us to build more beds with the dollars that we raise. And so people will donate. Um, also, through those links, you can donate um, through Amazon, Walmart. There's, like, bed in a bag, and you just literally pick them, and it goes right. It comes right to us. You don't even have to have it shipped to you and deal with it. It just ships right to our bedding coordinator. Um, but other people go further, and they'll make quilts. People who love to make quilts will do mm-hmm. that. And then people make tie blankets. It's a great event, a family event or a... Girl Scout event or a church group event where you can sit around and make tie blankets and then yeah. um, donate those. Did you, did I hear you mention that you do take donations of blankets that are are they like new? Like they have to be brand they new do ones. Have to be okay, new. Gotcha. mattresses and blankets. Do I was like, have I have a new. lot of blankets <laughs> that I can give you. <laughs> yes, Which is exactly why they need to be new. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. That's yeah. the reason I wanted to ask the question. So. Yeah. That's that's so neat. I, it's so incredible. Part of the reason I was asking is because we just had an infant, and I'm like, what about like needs like that? Yeah. Have you have you guys had um, circumstance families, and they're like, I yeah. I need I need this sort of like this is my like need a crib, yeah, yeah. versus a twin bed, like because yeah. it's just yeah. kids twin beds, isn't twin beds, all twin beds, kids three to seventeen. And you're absolutely right. Like when I started this and I I knew going in, we were even warned about this is like, you're going to go into situations where people have other needs. Like they don't have Mm -hmm. food. They don't have a kitchen table. They don't, they don't have much. They don't. And it's really, really, really hard to stay focused on what we do. Um, And I started out drifting from that a little bit because I couldn't stop myself, but it became overwhelming to try to solve all those problems. And then it took away from me doing what we do efficiently and well and fast, which is twin beds. Cool. But we've made okay. partnerships with other people that I know that you've had on this show and that other people that I meet even at Rotarian meetings that we make connections and then we refer people to other people yeah. who okay. do those things really efficiently yeah. and well. So Thank you for answering refer my question. Yeah. Refer yeah. people that are being efficient. And yeah. For, yeah. for our listeners, he is probably the best Rotary speaking non-Rotarian I've ever Right, I know. No kidding. But – but it just shows you Nate's not a Rotarian, and he is doing amazing work. It doesn't mean community. that you have to be a Rotarian. Right. It's just it, – it's everywhere, and yeah. it, we all speak the same language. It's so funny. Yeah. Like, it's just – we speak mm-hmm. the language of love and giving. One of the things that the Rotary groups and the Lions group love as well is when, when they donate the money and then they come to the build – to make beds, they get to meet other people in the community who have a passion for helping yeah. and probably our future Rotarians waiting yeah, totally. to be. Yeah. These people just need a way to give back. And well, it might be in the know. Rotary. It might be with SHP. It might be some other way. But here's mm-hmm. a group of 300 people who are looking for a yeah. way to get plugged in. And so they work alongside of them. They get to tell their story a little bit. And mm-hmm. we have people who have been in SHP and then have joined those groups. Legitimately, the purpose of our show, searching for yeah. service, and right we didn't there even in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah, it's so good, so good. 
Well, in our next section here, Nate, we are going to talk about um, how you envision the future of sleep and heavenly peace and really excited to hear more about that. And what your role is going to continue to be. Uh huh. Thank you for listening to Searching for Service. I'm Kelly Kirk. And I'm Chad Larson. And I'm Joe Kirk. We'll see you in the last section. Rotary is a place for all community-minded people who want to serve their areas with the support of an international organization. Join Rotary to find service. Join Rotary to find inclusion. Join Rotary to find leadership. Join Rotary to find fun. Join Rotary to find friendship. Join Rotary to find a better version of the world. Find a Rotary Club near you at rotary.org and click on Club Finder. There is a club out there for everyone. Find your fit with Rotary. Rotary.org. For decades, eradicating polio worldwide has been Rotary's cornerstone cause. We are incredibly close to ridding the globe of this virus, but we need everyone's help to get us to the goal. World Polio Day is October 24th. Please consider making a new donation to Polio Plus or increasing your already generous giving. Go to npolio.org to be a part of this historical eradication of polio. You will help get vaccinations to the most remote parts of our world and help fulfill a promise we made to end polio now. Two drops, and it stops. Don't miss Leonard Skinner, Darius Rucker, Ario Speedwagon, and Tyler Hubbard at Lakefront Music Fest, July 14th and 15th at Lakefront Park in Prior Lake. Leonard Skinner headlines July 14th with Ario Speedwagon and Blackstone Cherry. Darius Rucker headlines July 15th with Tyler Hubbard of Florida Georgia Line and Joe Nichols. Tickets available at lakefrontmusicfest.com. That's lakefrontmusicfest.com. Produced by Prior Lake Rotary. Riverbend Nature Center is a free, nonprofit natural habitat in Faribault, Minnesota. With 743 acres, the straight river, and 10 miles of trails. Despite no public funding, it offers educational programs to almost 10,000 youth and families annually. Riverbend seeks your feedback on its new strategic plan at rbnc.org backslash strategic dash planning by March 30th. Thank you for your time. Hello and welcome back to Searching for Service, brought to you by Rotary District 5950 and 5960. I'm Kelly Kirk. I'm Chad Larson. And I'm Joe Kirk. As a reminder, you can find us on your favorite podcast platforms. And Chad, we can... To find us, search Searching for Service on any podcast platforms. Like, comment... Share. Share. <laughs> Five star. Five, Five star, star review. Five Do it gold all. stars. <laughs> <laughs> if you are uh, tuning in for the first time, we have Nate Miller. He is with Sleep in Heavenly Peace, and his role is the chapter president for Minnesota Twin Cities South. And so, in our last section, segment, whatever you want to call it, Joe, <laughs> we always like to talk about how you envision your project or your nonprofit, like where the future of it is. And so talk to us a little bit about Sleep in Heavenly Peace and what the future could entail for it. Yeah. yeah. Kind of unfortunately, um, I don't see the need for beds decreasing. You know, I've mm-hmm. been doing this for seven years. The first year we built 150 beds, delivered them all. This year we're going to build 700 beds. Like I mentioned, we already have 200 kids waiting right now for the beds that we have yet to build. Mm. Um, So unfortunately, I think the future is bright in terms of need, which is not what we want, but we're here to fulfill that. And what I've seen change for me, and we talked a little bit about it, is how how it went from me in a truck and doing everything to thinking about my role as as empowering others and connecting others. Mm -hmm. And now I have a team of core volunteers on our team, like 26 strong, and these people are doing things better and faster than I ever could have done and more than I ever could have done and allowing us to help. I couldn't have done much more than 225 beds by myself, so it's allowing us to help that many more kids. So my role is really changing from doing to empowering. Okay. Um, And that's really been a transition for me because – and sometimes a challenge, to be honest, because w- one of the reasons I signed up to do it is I like the doing part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say that must be challenging when you when it's fulfilling for you to be able to do like 
get in there and actually do the physical act of building the bed. It is it is a challenge, and one thing that they humor me with is they still give me a delivery area, and uh, <laughs> so that is my cup refiller. You know, every yep. weekend mm-hmm. I start my Saturday morning with a delivery with some great people, and we meet some great families. And like I said before, it just changes your whole outlook on the rest of the weekends. Yeah. Well, you're suffering founderitis like anybody else. Like you know, yeah. when you scale yeah. it and you start to yeah. put in the systems and things like that, and all of a sudden you're like, actually, the highest and best use of my time is not building the beds. Exactly. Yes. Like look at these 25 people that do it way better than I do. Yeah. 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 Well, and if you can speak eloquently like you do about the nonprofit and what their purpose is. I mean, somebody's got to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what better person I than the, the one who can today. really speak yeah. so well to it? So <laughs> you're doing but, a fantastic yeah, job so say. far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's e- it's easy if it's just something that you just do. You love to do it. This thing works. I mean, these these chapters. We have 270 chapters around the country. Everybody. We talked a, bit, a little bit about. Everybody does it a little differently. The, our chapter does it a little bit differently than the other chapters in Minnesota. We have chapters in Pine City and White Bear Lake. Great guys that came alongside of us, worked with us, saw it, caught the bug as well, and went and started mm-hmm. their own chapters. Um, and so we are looking to open additional chapters as well. Um, there, there's Obviously, if there's that much need in the South Metro, I kind of think of the Twin Cities as a ring. Yeah. And White Bear Lake is kind of is on the eastern side. We're covering the south. The west and the north have just as much need, obviously, as well. Yeah. So Minnesota, the Twin Cities specifically, does need more SHP chapters, if anyone's interested in that. If you're not sure... You know, our advice is just come to a build, come and join us, be a part of the build, go on the deliveries, and we can start feeding you with beds. You can deliver beds in your own community for a while and see how that feels and what that might look like. Sounds like a good way to start. (laughs) Go go deliver a couple in your community. Yeah. Um, Nate, I have this this follow-up question for you. Have you done the research for, like, specifically the Twin Cities for where there might be the most prevalent need? Yeah. When we started, we actually were pretty naive, and we we just were open. We covered the Twin Cities, we said. It was just yeah. my wife and I and a few people, and we covered the Twin Cities. And we were, I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of beds in the hole so fast, and it was so disheartening and so, so soul crushing to actually call these families back and say there's no way we can build this many beds and get to you so mm-hmm. we then had to establish our area in the south metro but we were delivering into minneapolis and st paul it, it felt unending like an endless need there I so know. yeah so we we had to kind of shrink to stay sane in the sense that i, I can't say no and turn that many people away yeah so. yeah That's i thought. that was my thought process was like gosh i i have a hard time believing that like inner city that there isn't that need oh, I'm sure. yeah. like v- huge need yeah. right <laughs> every community but yeah, yeah you know yeah. as it get more dense there's going to be more mm-hmm. that's for sure it, the thinker in me <laughs> here we go starts to go how do you be, become a seed planter yeah. versus yep. the the harvester right like i think of the projects as the harvest right yeah. like it sounds like your role is very much transforming into the seed planter. And like, mm-hmm. how do you go into say a rotary club in St. Paul or Minneapolis or a community organization or somebody yeah. who reaches out for me from the show and says, you know, I'm really interested and go, here's how we're going to support you. Yeah. Here's, here's what we do. Yeah. This is, this is how I started this. Now you're not going to do nine of 10 of these things. Cause I learned it the hard way. You're going to go yes. to the, here's yeah. the process. Yeah, you're going to skip here's over how, all of yeah. that and yeah. start yeah. here. <laughs> and then you have us as a backboard and kind of doing it that way where you're already starting to do it, right? You've yep. got your 24 other people that are helping you with your, yep. but you're just kind of building these, um, I don't want to say disciples that can go out and, and plant and all that's of these That's a good seeds. way to put it actually. Yeah. <laughs> cause cause yeah. that seems like where this is at and where it needs Agreed. to scale to is that it's, the need is there. Like we're we're done talking about that. If anything, there's too much of a need. Like you were yeah. saying, it's it's how do we then find and empower and mobilize the people that get the ping? Like, like every story you keep kept telling me, I'm like, man, that's just crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like literally right yeah. right in your neighborhood. Yep. We we feel like as we mature and we get stable with all of our processes and our core team that we're there for that reason is to start to multiply. And, and again, like I was rustling within myself, I'm focused on myself here. Um, 
now I need to look outside of myself and I need to focus outwardly and apply my gifts that way. And then just our chapter is kind of going through the same thing. In the first few years, we focused on ourselves and figuring out Mm -hmm. who is our core team. Do we have enough tools? Where are we going to build? How are we going to survive? Now we've got a a great set of core team leaders, and now we can start to mature and look outside, just like you're saying. Well, it wasn't that beautiful symmetry of uh, (laughs) the beginning of the the show to now identifying that in yourself and then in the chapter as well. It was similar journey, yeah. yeah. Uh, before I forget, will you give us the rest of the dates for the summer that uh, you have? I know we talked Ju- June 15th, uh, 16th, 17th, but give, give me them also, the listeners yeah. can hear. Right? So it's basically one a month. It's June 15th through the 17th, July 13th through the 15th, August 10th through the 12th, September 7th through the 9th. And every weekend it's set up the same. There's one session from 530 to 730 on Thursday night. One from 5.30 to 7.30 on Friday night, and then two on Saturday morning that wrap up just after noon. So. Perfect. We'll put all those in the in the bio or in the description so you guys can check them out. But an, a great opportunity if uh, this has inspired you to consider uh, starting your own chapter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course. What advice do you give? So, so a lot of this show is about, you know, serving your community. And... Um, what advice do you give somebody that's out there not really sure what they want to do? You know, maybe maybe it's sleep in heavenly peace. Maybe it's something else. What piece of advice would you give somebody that's out there listening and going, I'm not really sure where to start? Yeah, I went at it a little bit, a very unusual way in the sense that I just had this idea and then jumped in with both feet. I don't know that I would recommend that. I got lucky, mm-hmm. and it's a great organization that I am passionate about. It all worked out, but the best way is to go volunteer somewhere kind of a non-committal type of a thing, just volunteer. And if you feel yourself compelled to go back and you like the people and you like the mission, you feel filled up, do it a little bit more, a little bit more and get in. And if you're not, if you're not certain you want to be in one thing, then Rotary Clubs and Lions Clubs are a great way to be involved a little bit in a lot. And you can try different roles and you can get into different things, be on committees and then come back out and that's a way to spread yourself around and learn what you might really truly be passionate about to go all in on. I just oh. feel like there's a rotary that's calling you. <laughs> <laughs> there really is. I really respect it. Like they're all calling me. Are you yeah. joking? <laughs> <laughs> I like to be a part of, works. you yeah. know what I mean? But, you know, there, it's also the, a time commitment. all the commitment. free time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is a time commitment. So I I, I do love the I, – I love the commitment. Like I love the partnership. It's not just a receiving partnership. And, and so here's a couple – one story real quick is that – the Lakefront Music Festival. So, you, you know, you, if you've ever been to that, it's a major event. And yeah. there is mm-hmm. a sea of people, a mass of people. And then we signed up. So in order to serve the Rotary, we signed up to clean up the Lakefront Music Festival, <laughs> SHP, and our core volunteers the next day to come in and clean up. And we drove over the hill on Sunday morning and saw what was left after the Lakefront Music <laughs> Festival. And it looked like... A tornado had gone through yeah, there. You can imagine. Can. And everyone in the car started to say, turn around, turn around, turn around. <laughs> we cannot pick this place up. We had to pick everything up there. We had, it's a great system. It was not bad. We had a great time. We're doing it again this year. But I love that, that we're working side by side to raise the money and mm-hmm. to use it. They come and build beds with us. We are there doing the dirty work as well and, and cleaning up after this. So we're all in this together. We all want to make the community better. Let's go. Thank I gosh, that. that's about as good of a way to end, I don't end know. the show. Yeah. 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 Nate, thank you so much yeah. for taking time out of your day to come and speak on behalf of Sleep in Heavenly Peace. It certainly was incredible to hear more about the organization itself and, and the passion that you have. That's the one yeah. thing that stood yeah. out to me is the passion. And so thank you very much for for coming on to Searching for Service. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. I'm Chad Larson. I'm Kelly Kirk. And I'm Joe Kirk. As a reminder, it's time to stop searching and start serving. Thanks for listening.